All right, everybody. Thanks for joining us. We have the, uh, this is the second lightning round table. And with us, we have uh, BTC Socialist. Um, we also have um, Oliver, or on Twitter known as uh, Google. And we also have Suheb, who uh, does the uh, Ride the Lightning interface. And myself, Coin Icarus. So I want to thank all you guys for joining us. And what we're going to do is, is that uh, we're going to start off with the uh, uh, we're going to start off with Oliver because uh, Oliver has made some pretty interesting contributions to uh, to LND, and uh, I, I'd like him to uh, give us his uh, maybe a bit of his rabbit hole story and uh, how he got into this and and what he's working on. Sure. Okay. Thanks. Um, yeah, I'm Oliver. Um, I started uh, uh, with Bitcoin in early 2017 because of a friend. He told me, hey, look, you're a techie, you're a developer, you have to look into this. Uh, so I did. Uh, I uh, went in, uh, made a deep dive on the technical side. I played around uh, with many different coins. I built my own wallets and uh, cryptography tools just to figure out how all this stuff works, how the signature works how uh, transactions are built. So I, I built a lot of uh, dummy tools for myself to just uh, figure out uh, um, how everything is connected. Um, and yeah, then I thought I really want to contribute to this space. I want to build software that uh, yeah helps this whole ecosystem. And I'm not the C programmer or C++, so Bitcoin D, Bitcoin Core was, was uh, it's still out of my reach. I, yeah, I didn't feel comfortable to really get into this, but then I found uh, Lightning in, uh, was that late 2017 when there was no mainnet version around and I thought, yeah, yeah, go, that sounds like yeah, a new language. So that sounds like something I could uh, learn and uh, play around with. And so I did. And uh, I started creating my first contributions to l and in early 2018. And a lot, uh, some of them got merged pretty right away. And so I was very enthusiastic. And I started uh, implementing um, some feature requests that were in the GitHub repo. And um, it, it so happens that most of them uh, had something to do with the macaroons. So I really got into this topic as well. I uh, uh, yeah, tried to figure out uh, how these work and why they have potential and why, yeah, what we could do with them. And um, I did most of that work um, last year when uh, some friends and I, we took off work uh, for a month and we went to Greece and we just went coding away on uh, different Bitcoin and Lightning stuff. So we had a pool outside and we're just uh, coding and sunbathing for a month. And that was really cool. And yeah, I also brought this whole uh, Bitcoin and uh, Lightning topic to my company or the company I work for. I'm just an employee, but um, we we got some budget and we built some use cases that you you might even have seen on Twitter. Uh, we built this uh, self order point of sale screen in Bern for the restaurant Energy Kitchen, where you can just uh, order food by directly paying a QR code. That's displayed outside. So you can get your real life blockagino from uh, this coffee shop. And we also built wow. uh, we also built uh, this uh, lightning enabled beer tap, which you might have seen. Uh, we brought it to Munich. Um, yeah, BTC Socialist posted uh, several pictures and videos. So uh, you, you yeah you might have seen that as well. So yeah, we built uh, several things, and the, the the software that powers this is uh, called the SUS server like uh, the the same name as the mobile app but uh, there's uh, yeah it's just a name collision it has nothing to do with uh, our stuff but you can build your own um self order machine with that so it's all open source it's all on our uh, company github page so if you search for Go uh, sue server you should find our software um yeah so that's basically it uh 
do a lot of stuff in my uh, spare time, free time that's uh, on L and D, and also uh, something on company time. Then it's the uh, yeah, the server exactly. That's awesome. Can I? Uh, are we uh, able to maybe post a link to that in our in the show notes after? Yeah, sure, sure. Okay, because I'd love to share that. That'd be amazing. So yeah, I'll put the links into uh, our uh, Twitter uh, group, and then you can post it. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna we're, we're gonna come back to you after because I, I want to I definitely want to ask you more about macaroons and TLS certs um, because I, I think that for you know like uh, for for the average user I, I think that that's all very magical you know and, and mystical <laughs> yeah. like I, I feel like it's uh, it's out there so I'm definitely gonna want to come back to you um, but uh, what I'm gonna do is I, I want to uh, just go over to uh, to Suheb uh, how how you doing good how are you doing. Very good, very good. So um, I just wanted to talk to you quickly uh, as well about. Um, I know that uh, recently I uh, found out from Matt Odell that uh, that you guys uh, put your interface in, uh, in in the noddle as well. Is that um, is is that official that uh, you guys are going to be there? Yeah, and it's uh, it's not a recent uh, development actually. It's been uh, we've been with Noddle for at least four or five months actually. Oh wow! If not uh, if not more. Yeah, so I've been working closely with uh, Keto Miner. I, I've been interacting with Keto Miner for a long time, actually. Uh, and this was even when, uh, like, we were even a little, uh, you know, lower on our feature, uh, you know, uh, features that we have on the UI. Uh, so I started, like, speaking with um, or trying to interact with uh, Keto Miner uh, when I saw that, you know, Nodal, Nodal is coming up with a full node solution. And uh, if you look at our, you know, our vision for RTL per se, right? It is primarily uh, like geared towards a full node or a routing node uh, operator, right? So uh, because we uh, expose a lot of LND functionality, a lot of LND complexity uh, on the UI, uh, although we try to kind of structure it in such a way that uh, you know when you go through the functional uh, controls, it makes a logical sense. Uh, oh, yeah. But our objective is to kind of Give a uh, an organized fashion a complete uh, API offering that LND has, so that uh, you know uh, you can perform all the functions without actually going to the command line. And uh, if you look at the API coverage right now that we have for LND, it's more a little over sixty one percent, a little over sixty percent basically. So we are covering a lot of functionality, and uh, our objective is to keep uh, covering as you know as more and more functional features become available. Uh, you know, whatever makes sense for the users, uh, make it available so that, you know, there is less and less uh, interaction required for the command line and you can do most of the functions on the UI itself. Uh, so, and with that objective, you know, when that was the vision always. So when we started developing, it was a logical thing for us to kind of look at, you know, who are the hardware solution providers who are, uh, you know, rolling out Lightning, Bitcoin plus Lightning, uh, you know, solutions. So that's what, so when we started speaking with Raspberry Blitz a long time back. So, you know, speaking with Nordal was also a kind of a logical extension. So I reached out to Ketominer and, and he was interested, uh, you know, uh, he was doing a lot of infrastructure, hardware related stuff. Uh, but he was a little, uh, you know, he was trying to find a good solution which fits from a UI perspective. So that kind of clicked uh, well with him. He started testing our UI and then he rolled out uh, RTL on, on Nordal as well. I have a question for you. Do you have any? Um, do you have any plans, or I should ask, have you had any demand for a uh, a mobile app? Um, because like that'd be. I mean, I, I think that's pretty cool. But so there's been a suggestion, uh, and uh, and uh, if you look at RTL right now, it, the the interface is responsive. So yeah, you can actually open the UI on a mobile interface, uh, but it is not. Optimized well. We, while we try to ensure that we uh, reduce our uh, you know resolution or controls to the mobile interface as well, uh, so that it scales. Uh, but it is not a you know a web. It, it's it depends on how mature uh, web applications would run on a mobile browser. So there is a technical limitation there as well, and uh, that kind of uh, kind of restricts us to from providing a lot of polished UI features like a typical native app would be. Uh, but uh, I mean, we, we've been we always make sure that whenever we roll our functionality, we are always adjusting it for mobile resolution as well. So that's always a design consideration when we are doing it. 
uh, but it's not a full feature mobile app. Uh, that's also a possibility we can do that, but we are trying to restrict the technical uh, limitation that we have to deal with uh, so that we can continue to you know roll out features basically. Cool. Um, another question for you, because I, I noticed the obviously as I play with my raspy blitz, um, okay, so, through through the uh, the lightning interface and maybe I just didn't see it correctly but um, I, I noticed uh, like over there I don't have access to my my on chain Bitcoin you know what I mean like I, I can't uh, generate an address like you know when you're in the Raspi Blitz and, and you're through the uh, the command line you yeah. know you can go there and obviously you know create your your payment address yeah I, I've always wondered has anybody asked about doing that through the ride the lightning web interface. We have that. You guys, you guys are. I'm sorry. That feature we have. So if you, oh. in the menu list, uh, there is a section called LND Wallet. Yeah. So if, if you click on that, there you'll be able to generate a new address, and you can send out your coins. Also, if you want to sweep all your coins out, you can do that, and you can receive coins as well. So, and there's a QR code also that is generated. So, if you have a mobile app through which you want to sell uh, funds to your uh, Lightning node, uh, so you can do that. So there's a there's a section okay. menu called LND Wallet, and you should. Yeah, do I've been there. I'll go back and double check because I mean I've definitely opened channels with it, and mine's up and running. But I I just I was always you know like when you want to send funds to your node, yeah. yeah for for on chain BTC. Yeah. Like I I never found the spot where I could generate the the Bitcoin wall uh, you know the the Bitcoin address to send the funds to. Sure. So look so for I'll double check. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> look for the wallet. Uh, you'll find it there. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Thank you. Well, and what version are you on as well? Because there is, it does generate the QR code, doesn't it, which is then displayed uh, on the actual. Yes, um, it does. The screen. Yep. Well, I, I'm still on one one. So. Oh, RTL one one. Oh yeah. Okay. So. Well, I mean, I'm on Raspy Blitz one one. I should say. Oh okay. Uh, yeah. So RTL, if you go to the latest version three point three, actually, uh, the LND wallet feature was available even in the initial release that we had. That was one of the basic functions which we introduced. So okay. no matter which version you're on, you should be able to find it. Okay. I don't think it's as slick, though, is it? Because I think the... Did we lose BT Socialist? BTC? Yeah, I, I think he, yeah, I think he may have uh, just frozen up. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, that's... Uh, I. Because I, I mean, definitely the L and D wallet part of it. But do you, do you get what I mean with the uh, the on chain funds with you know sending to the the base Bitcoin wallet? Yes, yes, very much. I, 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 I'm, like, uh, I'm going to go back and double check. I may be just totally misunderstanding. I apologize. <laughs> no problem. It's just the second menu actually. So from the home, the second menu is uh, L and D wallet. You should be able to find it there. Okay, cool. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, so let me ask you this: Is there are there any features that uh, that are coming up that uh, that you can discuss, or that yeah. you'd like to discuss? <laughs> so, uh, the biggest feature at this point, the big feature that we are working on is the uh, the native solution for uh, channel backups. Uh, and uh, what we are trying to do is uh, give uh, an ability to. Uh, upload the channel backup file um, yeah, to a cloud service like a, like a Google or a Dropbox. Uh, and we will also try to add options for integration with BTC Pay Server so that you know BTC Pay Server has the flexibility to uh, you know back up the channel backup file into you know whatever user preference uh, is provided in uh, in BTC Pay Server. So I have one question for you about that backup. Um, sorry, before you continue, are is there any plans to make it so that you can save it uh, through the browser, let's say to your desktop, not just uploading it to the cloud? So uh, I'm just looking at it. Sorry, I'm just looking at it like a Windows user, you know, so that I could save a, a backup locally. Yeah, there should be uh, an option for you to do that. Uh, well, RTL, uh, it, there, there's a RTL. Uh, there will be a backup folder within RTL where the backups will be, uh, you know, maintained. And you can actually go to your file system and you know save that file wherever you want to. Uh, we, I, we, what we want to do is make sure that when we are adding features to upload files uh, somewhere else, uh, you know it does not introduce uh, you know vulnerabilities. You know because when we start interacting with the file system, there's a chance that it uh, ah. you know. So we have to be very I careful about it. the aspect. Uh, so those are the things that we are paying attention to. And based on whatever is the safest option, we'll provide you, a, a, you know, a flexibility. I, I like that too, Heb. 
Sure. That that's that's good. Thank you. I, I didn't even I didn't even think of that. I was just thinking of convenience over security. I, I appreciate that. That's where we have to pay, pay you know attention that uh, you know we don't add uh, vulnerabilities when we are adding aspects of interacting with the file system. Um, another big item that we are working on, uh, and I've been talking about it for a while actually, uh, integration with C Lightning. Uh, but uh, that is still, um, you know, a little far away. Uh, there's a lot of work that we have to do in creating a API layer uh, for C Lightning, and uh, you know, there's a aspect of learning C Lightning as well, which uh, which I've been doing for a while now. Uh, but C Lightning has its nuances, and kind of we are kind of going through increasing. I already have a published um, uh, API repo on GitHub that that I'm continuing to build. Uh, but it's still kind of uh, you know far away, and but I'm very excited about that. You know, we are very excited about uh, developing integration, of, you know, with C Lightning. That's something that we are looking forward to. Very cool, very cool. I'm definitely looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have a C Lightning node yet, so I mean, this is you know, all of my nodes are LND. Yeah, so, LND actually. If you if you uh, look at LND and C Lightning per se, uh, even though you have to operate the command line. Uh, LND has a much easier, uh, you know, path for onboarding new users because of the documentation that it makes available. Um, uh, whereas uh, with C Lightning, I, I struggle a bit. You know, um, maybe I don't know whether if I'm too lazy to search for, <laughs> or it is not that easy to find. Uh, but I always have to kind of go to the command line, you know, pull up help, uh, and then try to figure out how to, you know, uh, interact with that node. Uh, but the good thing is having an experience with LND. There are some there's some basics that we have learned. And I find it easier now to like understand uh, C Lightning, uh, but still there are nuances, uh, and uh, you really have to like dig deeper into C Lightning's own uh, take on how Lightning could function uh, to really you know uh, start working with that. I think someone's working on a plugin for C Lightning to actually make it uh, interface compatible with L and D, so you could just. Um, use this plugin, and then it has the same interface, uh, gRPC interface as LND, because all mm -hmm. the the commands are already very similar. So maybe you, you could use that one once it's available. Yeah. So I actually looked at when I started going down that path. I actually looked at the options available. Uh, there is uh, one uh, API library called Lighter, uh, which has a gRPC type interface available for C Lightning, Eclair, and LND. So it kind of gives you one common layer, right? So you it need not matter which particular Lightning implementation you are do you are implementing, you can just use that. But the problem there is that it's a gRPC interface and RTL needs um, you know REST APIs. So uh, okay. that's why we started writing our own. Yeah, but I definitely agree there's a bit of learning curve there. So that's what is kind of taking time for us to get to the point where we can actually integrate the UI. Okay. Very cool. Um, okay, so we're gonna uh, we're gonna move on to uh, BTC Socialist uh, just to see if he has uh, what what's going on. I I know that you're gonna be heading out to uh, San Francisco and uh, tell us a little bit more about what's happening. Yeah, man. Uh, um, I'm a bit worried though because my computer keeps crashing. So if I crash, then you know, just carry on without me, and then I'll, I'll just hop back in. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to San Francisco to the Bitcoin conference, um, and uh, I'm making some. They released a little video on Twitter. I've made some little modules um, which uh, accept. So it's kind of like my you know ESP32, and then a little relay, a little battery, and then a nice little screen which displays the QR code. And then, so when you pay a lightning transaction, it then just turns the relay on um, and switches the coin mechanism on an arcade machine uh, to then give you a credit on the arcade. Um, uh, so uh, OpenNode are um, the company who've kind of commissioned me to make these things. They've hired like 10 arcade machines, which are gonna be around the San Francisco conference. And they're all gonna have these modules and you can go up to them and boom, and you can pay for credits on these arcade games. It's a nice little like uh, implementation. I really like retrofitting devices uh, with the ability to accept lightning payments i'm far more interested in that than, ma than making like new devices um like you can see here i've got like a, um, a point of sale terminal i want to retrofit that so it'll accept lightning payments um as opposed to you know the one next to it which is my own little point of sale terminal i've made um so if anyone's watching this on on world crypto network then you'll know that i make you know these little tutorials experimenting with hardware and the the sp32 which is this thing here is like my base microcontroller it's like five dollars incredibly low energy um 
and you can do a lot with it. It's very functional. Uh, one of the things I wanted to um, uh, talk about was um, in the last uh, roundtable thing we did, uh, there was a lot of discussion around the Blitz screen and getting it to be more interactive. Well, the SP32 Express, if you make the SP32 microcontroller, they've released like an official supported version of their um, development framework for little VGL, uh, which is uh, for making GUIs and stuff. So I got like a screen here, which is a TFT touchscreen uh, screen. Um, with that, I can make a little GUI, which then basically does what RTL does, um, but through the SP32. So uh, the way the last couple of tutorials I've done on my my, my uh, on World Crypto Network, I've just got the the SP32 to like collect info on um, on the node and then display it on an e-paper display, a bit like this one. Um, and then um, I've extended that, but I haven't released a tutorial yet. Obviously, it displays QR code and you can pay, and it basically does what my other um, ability, payment modules have done, uh, but without using like a custodian, just talking to the node directly. Um, well, as it's doing these API calls and posting get requests through the REST LND REST API, um, the GUI of the um, uh, little VGL could do all that functionality as well. So one of the things uh, I wanted to ask on the RTL side was, I thought it'd be quite nice if users have, obviously they've got the, the Rider Lightning option, and then to have that same sort of coloring and branding and style, if I kind of built that into the, the GUI of this, because this is essentially doing the same thing, it's like a sort of seamless experience then, isn't it? So, I mean, obviously you could have like your mobile phone and you could access your, your Lightning node that way, but to have this as, a, as, a, as a, a fixed feature somewhere where you can access functions on your Lightning node and you know you can you can check it, you can you can top up your on-chain balance, get it to display a QR code and all this. It'll basically do what the Raspberry Blitz screen currently does. Plus, it will have uh, the ability for you to interact through touch screen and then run you know different functions for different get and post requests using the LND uh, REST API. So I was pretty interested in like nicking the the, the you know the, the style of of RTL and trying to make it look, although it's not obviously the same project, but like trying to make it um, complement the project, you know, like, uh, so you kind of get that seamless experience. Does that make sense? Anyone can you hear me? Oh yeah. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, I can hear you, but I think Suheb just dropped off. I think oh, he was. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, that, makes sense. Um, <laughs> that was okay, funny. So, so I'm super interested Nobody in hardware it. stuff. Um, I also did an interview with, um, Oliver. Uh, a couple of the last last week um, on his work on macaroons, and uh, we've got a lot in common on on how interested we are in this ability to have custom cat macaroons. That's something else which I will manage. There's so much to talk about. I don't really know where to start. Sure. So yeah, we've got the San Francisco conference. Looking forward to that. Making these little modules. That should be cool. Also going to do a tutorial there. Um, so if you if you're going to the San Francisco conference, come and see me, um, and then you can sit down. You can experiment with the SP32, get it to talk, uh, accept lightning. Um, uh, 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 invoices and then display them as a QR code and pay them. Um, I've also got some little keypads so we can turn it into a little point of sale device. So I'm going to be doing tutorials on that in San Francisco. Um, on, uh, on the 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 Blitz front, I'm trying to get this screen to work as a Blitz screen, but with touch screen capability. And then um, uh, on the macaroon front with Oliver, really interested in the the custom cat macaroons. I want to talk about that a little bit more. Um, so so yeah. So but now you're back, like RTL. So do you reckon yeah. that would be cool if I did that? If I kind of nicked your style? So, so I, I I was not able to listen to the whole conversation. Can you repeat the the question again? Sorry. I... Yeah yeah. So in the last roundtable, we talked about um, um, uh, getting the Blitz screen to have some interaction. So when you could like you know you could press buttons and you could access different functions as you were mm -hmm. saying there's security vulnerabilities the more of that stuff you build in to the to the blitz then yeah. you're obviously getting the security trade-offs yeah um what i've been i've experienced so express if you make the sp32 they've released an official uh, support for little vgl which is like a um a, a touch screen gui um uh, library okay um and this thing can do get and post requests uh to the lnd um uh rest api so uh, you could essentially do what we were talking about getting the blitz screen to do last last time on, mm -hmm. on the thing, um, but you could do it using the CSP32. So all the blitz is getting is getting post requests. So mm -hmm. you're not so you're, you're you're like air gapping that vulnerability. You've also got the added bonus of being mm -hmm. able to keep your node somewhere super safe, and mm -hmm. then have your screen somewhere you could have it somewhere fairly public. You know, mm -hmm. uh, if you've got limited functionality on it. 
Um, mm. But what I was asking was, because it'd be quite nice to kind of get a seamless experience, is if I could kind of like nick some of the style of the RTL project mm. and then try and like the color and brand the, the, um, the, the GUI of this when it eventually turns into a project, if it does. Um, uh, uh, so you kind of get that similar experience. You know, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. It does definitely. Yeah, we can definitely explore and see. Uh, you know, uh, from a hardware perspective. So when we are thinking of UI, we have to look at the resolution capability of the device. Uh, and it, so RTL specifically is a web UI, right? So I don't know whether this particular interface would support a, a browser. Right? No, it wouldn't. It wouldn't. So it wouldn't. It wouldn't be exactly the uh, um, uh, ride the lightning um, interface. It more. It, it'd obviously be kind of like a modulized version of it. If that makes sense. Okay. 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 Um, so it would have like different menu screens. You'd have to hop from menu screen to menu screen to get to different functionality. We just kind of had my idea was to try and steal some because obviously RTL looks nice to try and steal just some of the uh, the style, you know? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think, yeah, it makes sense. I agree with that. That's cool. Well, I look forward to that. This will be my next hack then, which I'm going to be hopefully developing on. I, I'll be curious, like, what UI technology you would use uh, and yeah. what kind of support will be available. Or UI controls on a like a small uh, interface. It will be more mobile, closer to mobile type UI, right? Oh, sorry, say that again. Uh, the UI framework that you will use to provide these controls on this little uh, interface, right, would be more closer to the uh, mobile type, uh, you know, UI libraries available uh, than a web, uh, you know, web UI per se. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, be more like it'd be more that like that sort of experience. I mean, you could arguably just use an app, like you know, uh, um, uh, Chris was saying, you could just use an app which then uh, does that on your phone. Um, yeah. But this would kind of be like a, a permanent fixture somewhere. You yeah. know, maybe it'd have limited functionality, so you could just literally, you know, check if if, if your if your channels are on or whatever, or yeah. check yeah. the the just the the, uh, and then maybe you could fund your on chain address or something. You know. Yeah, yeah. It can be like a you know. Temperature control device, right? Where you go and check <laughs> at home. You can go and check, okay, what is the status of my node, right? You know. That stuff's that useful. So like I've been making a point of sale for room 77 in Berlin. Um, mm -hmm. and I've been interacting with their, their node, um, mm -hmm. um, uh, which Christian set up. Now, uh, Jorg, the guy who owns room 77, he's got really like weird internet connection and the node keeps dropping out. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm like developing and then all of a sudden my little gizmo doesn't work. And I'm like, why is it not working? I think it's me and my software. Right. So all I did was make like the simplest little, I like, just got an ESP32, I got it downstairs, two LEDs, one red, one green, and yeah. then when the node's online, it's just green. And then as soon as it cuts out, it just goes red. And that's yeah. so useful. It's like yeah. the simplest thing, you know? Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, and if you've, if you've, you know, if, you've, if you're using your node, just to have like a visual, uh, um, there's something in the room with you. So if, you, if your node drops off, then you, you know, you can see it straight away. I, I know I found that really useful, so. Yeah. I find that particular uh, feature a uh, lot more useful when somebody is actually operating a lot of, uh, you know, routing nodes. So if somebody is a professional routing node, uh, you know, operator, so there's there's so much information that they have to keep track of, right? So these controls can really help them uh, develop a like a you know bird's eye view of you know which node you know is functional, which node is failing. Do I need to go and check? Uh, you know, uh, what is the problem with that particular node? I so, mean, it's it's all time, isn't it? But it's very probable that you could have this device, and you could have like visual representations of all the nodes which you're running, exactly. and then if one goes down, or like you could click on one, and then you know access. Obviously, you can access if it went down, but you could then access them individually because then all, you, all you're doing is just changing the um, you're just changing the uh, the, the URL, aren't you? If the uh, for the and the the certificate, uh, yeah. the TLS certificate. I, I see that you know, like I said, like you know, more data center type of operation where you can have these displays running, and you can figure out, okay, you know, you know, these these this node is misbehaving, so let me go and check and see, you know, what is the problem basically. Yeah, it's a very worthy project. It's just time, though, isn't it? Everything's time. Yeah. Like, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to have a um, what one thing I'd love to to see would be, and I I don't know if it can be done, but essentially a, a generic web UI where you could manage all your different types of nodes because there's the Noddle, BTC Pi, the Raspi Blitz. There's going to be, we know Staticus is working on the, uh, you know, with the, that Shift Crypto team, the Bitbox, yeah. uh, the, you know, their note like that would be, I mean, you know, and then if I you think, think about like, it, right? 
that's, like you that's said before, that... just having like a unified like API, like one one API which they all kind of use or agree upon, then that would be that useful. Yeah. So but... on that particular front, right? We are trying to create um, uh, or handle the UI of uh, you know within one UI handle multiple nodes. And um, so right now, if you look at RTL's feature uh, list, there is a feature called multi-node uh, management, where you can actually connect multiple nodes through the single UI. So all you have to do is, uh, you know, multiple LND nodes we can manage through one UI. Uh, so you will be able to, you can go in your settings and you can switch to a different node, right? And then you don't need to really log into the, you know, a different device or a dip, log type a different IP address. Within the same UI, you can just go to the settings, switch the node and, you know, Look at that uh, that note particularly. Basically, so stupid question though: Would uh, is there and and I know because Casa you know has their proprietary stuff. Would we possibly be able to monitor a node like a Casa node through this UI? Uh, so it depends, like how much flexibility Casa is providing. You would need That's... to take out the settings. Um, uh, so RTL, would, you have to configure a multi-node config JSON file. And then within the JSON file, there is uh, you know one section for each node. So if you configure your settings, and you have to actually also uh, put your macroon file uh, on the server on which RTL is running. So if you have the macroon file for different nodes, oh okay. Settings of what is the IP address for each of those nodes? Then you can just go to the setting and switch to different nodes. What we our vision is ultimately to actually uh, provide a unified dashboard. So then, you know, you have, so instead of actually even switching to a, through a different node, you can actually, in one view, when you log in, you can actually see a lot of information from different nodes. We can summarize yes. you know, high level parameters on a single dashboard. So that is the next level of integration we want to do on a multi-node management. But right now also we have the feature where you can, through a single UI, you can switch to different uh, LND nodes. And once we have the C Lightning integration available, we can add the C Lightning integration as well in that JSON file. So. You know what? This, this this is a really cool license model if you think about it. You know, <laughs> lots of five yeah. nodes, right? I, I think it's great. I I like it's genius, right? I mean, we gotta we gotta get it out there, you know. And like people have to, you know. I mean, this stuff doesn't come for free. You know, it it takes time and it takes effort. And I uh, I I gotta tell you, man, if you, you do something like that, I am most likely gonna end up paying for it. <laughs> so. So, uh, yeah, and that feature particularly is more useful if you are a routing node operator. And I would assume that a routing node operator would be operating multiple nodes, right? So they would want to track uh, all of their nodes through a single UI. So uh, that makes it makes okay. more sense for you know those type of technical uh, users. So do you, think, than... do you think there is a business case for, for routing node operators? I, I do. Can't... I, I do I'm, think there's a business case, and uh, and actually, I think that the reason why we don't see it yet is the same reason that most people couldn't see Bitcoin when it was worth almost nothing. It's right now they're just it doesn't have the I mean, and it's growing, but it doesn't have the network that it will. And when it does, I I believe that people are, and I've said this before, I truly believe that um, people are are totally discounting the uh, the the fee model in Lightning. And but doesn't it just drive prices down, 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 down to nothing? Like, isn't it, isn't it a race to the bottom price-wise? Like, you know, Bitcoin's supported just by people running nodes for themselves. It, it is so. now. It is now because uh, right now what you see is a very uh, nascent or experimental stage uh, of the network adoption, right? You don't yeah. see a lot of the liquidity if you look at it, right? Um, so the way I foresee the network growth is that you'll have multi multiple tiers, tiers of liquidity. Right, and at each tier of liquidity, uh, there will be a fee range. Right, yeah. so and basically that's how kind of Lightning is designed. Also, right, the uh, the the routing fee which is charged is based not just on uh, you know the transaction itself, but uh, how much you are sending. Right, so uh, that's how the fees is charged. So obviously, it kind of once you start getting a lot of competition, right now what you'll see is when you send a large amount of uh, you know transaction a large amount of money through lightning network the fees that you, know, you have to pay will be much higher whereas if you, you send a small amount of money uh, the fees will be negligible right it will be almost zero 
Now, what I foresee is uh, this is the case because there is no competition in higher volumes of liquidity, right? Uh, right now, that kind of is monopolized. Very few nodes are having high capacity channels. That's why it's kind of mon monopolized. Uh, but then you have, but then you have payment splitting, so you can split like a big payment into lots of little bits anyway. Yeah, when you get AMP, yeah, that yeah. then it is a different, uh, that different ball game. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, but I, I, I still feel that it's a kind of a very nascent stage of the network. We have not seen um, really how the network's fee model will evolve. But I, I, I still feel that the, the, there's definitely um, an incentive to earn the routing fee. And people are going to actually invest a lot of time in coming up with uh, algorithms to optimize yes. this deployments of liquidity, finding out um, you know disk network discovery. There'll be a lot of data analysis which can happen uh, to really figure out what is the best Place for you to actually deploy your liquidity. Well, I suppose the question is: Does it? Does it? Does in order for Lightning Network to, to work, does it need to have um, uh, like a, a, a fee-based system? I, I don't know if it does. I think it would still probably work, particularly if you're able to split payments. Yeah, um, I, I think it does because uh, if you look at the overall ecosystem, right? So you see there is a customer side where you know you have wallets, Lightning wallets, who want to make the payment and you know buy the services. And all the goods. Now, on the other side, uh, you have on the receiving side, you have the pay merchants, right, who are accepting Lightning payments, right. But you still have a big stakeholder of Lightning node uh, op operators, which are actually providing the connectivity. It's impossible for you to connect with every other node, right. So, there is a place for uh, the routing node operators. There is a space, and where they will be offering that feature, and the incentive for them would have to be routing fees otherwise why would anybody want to kind of you know connect a number of people right so uh, well it gives, I, them, it gives them better connectivity um uh you know and bitcoin's got plenty of nodes people are still going to run full nodes aren't they um uh so i don't know if it needs what do you, well, oliver chime in on this what, what do you think on this one yeah. i will uh, i think there will be a, a fee model uh, establishing itself um i mean now it's it's mostly hobbyists trying their notes at home and don't care if there's uh, any income at all or well uh, at least i don't uh, i uh, i have a look at my note and i see yeah okay for satoshis yeah doesn't really earn me that much but i think there will be uh, a huge um business model for for uh, routing fees and i particularly also think um when people start playing around with not just sending payments but maybe also using the tor like uh, onion encryption of the network that we could also maybe see uh, uh, like a messaging network on top of lightning and then you start getting really a lot of traffic and then you want to charge something uh to run your node i think at the moment it's really because it's so cheap running a lightning node you don't care uh, about your fees and you you put them on the default which is almost zero but if you see a lot of traffic a lot of effort then you might raise your fees and other network operate, uh, node operators might do the same so i think it, it's just yeah we're very early and at the moment, maybe there is a few thousand payments per hour. Uh, yeah, we, we don't know, and that will go up to millions of payments, and then every Satoshi will will sum up very quickly if you route okay. thousands of payments. But yeah, we, we will see. So there's uh, there's one thing I, I'd actually. Uh... Suheb, there's one thing I'd like to see, at least in the web interface, and this isn't only you guys. I think every node is missing this, but when you're a routing node, okay, because I, I did this. I had an Excel document where every single day I would write down my BTC amount, right? Mm -hmm. I would put what's in my lightning channels, and I would try to figure out, of course, you know, like, am I going up or am I going down? You know, like, are my sats going up or are they going down? So mm -hmm. it's, and I've noticed that it fluctuates daily. Yeah. So it would be really cool to have, I, I don't know, like a calculation, like a little graph to kind of show maybe like, you know, daily, weekly, you know, stuff like that. Because I, I think that that's the other thing, right? It, um, going back to, you know, what Oliver was saying and, and even what you're saying is that, you know, right now it's experimental. So we don't have so much data. But, mm -hmm. you know, like I think if we could show people the data that we do have, mm -hmm. um, I, I think it would. I, I think it would help people see the bigger picture of it. Yeah. So, so that, that'd be cool. 
Yeah, so at this point in our uh, evolution of RTL per se, we are not maintaining a local database, right? If you look at um, RTL's, uh, you know, setup, we just have a config file, and then uh, we just utilize the uh, the API layer to kind of talk to LND. So what you're getting is uh, what is actually LND returning, basically, right? The data that LND APIs are returning. So there is a possibility that we can create our own database and provide more analysis type, uh, you know, interface where you get more insight into how your different parameters of your network uh, are actually uh, you know behaving and uh, whether you are profitable not profitable how your liquidity is there's a lot of work that can actually happen when we create our own local db right so that is something that uh, can happen but right right now we are not there yet at this point our focus is to provide more api coverage um, and also you know like lnd keeps on developing at lightning pace right um, and uh, there's so much, we are always behind, uh, you know, LND. So there's always so much catching up to do with LND's feature list itself that, you know, we cannot get to the point where we can actually add more value. But hopefully, you know, once there is more authentication, uh, you know, there is less features coming in, more stability, then we can kind of add all these good things where, uh, you know, uh, you get more insight into how your uh, node is doing, right, from different parameters. Yeah, I mean, yeah, to me, it feels like uh, LND, they're very much just trying to get as many features in now as they can before before it becomes hard to develop because uh, yeah. so many people are using it. Um, uh, but it's funny, like like you said, I mean, going to the hack day, there were, there were plenty of people that, who had criticisms of LND and uh, um, some of the you know, some of the documentation, which might not be quite up to scratch, mm -hmm. um, such as like the REST API documentation, which is, I don't think it's been updated for a while. It could probably do with like an intern addressing it and, and trying to polish up a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. So no, I think you're right. I think it's just it's going to become more stable over time, isn't it? They're just trying to get as much in now as they can before. Obviously, they have to slow down because um, people like you are struggling so much to keep up. Yeah, I am. Yeah, <laughs> it's a daily struggle, right? Even uh, if I miss one or two days of Slack, I feel like uh, you know I've lost the track of <laughs> where the action is. <laughs> It's you know what I was actually uh, to your point you know it's like you, you'll be writing something and I kid you not if you don't write it fast enough it's like obsolete before you publish it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The developer ideal <laughs> is like ride, riding the lightning. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, I just want to see. Hey, fluid voice, are you? Because uh, I saw you joined. Are you with us? Yeah, I'm here. I'm just kind of being a fly in the wall. Hey, cool. Okay, Long thank through. you. <laughs> no, but no, I, I actually. Um, I, I'm really glad that you joined us. Um, I just wanted to, because I wanted to get updates, you know, from everybody. And uh, I know that uh, I've, I, you know, I've been following a lot of your, uh, um, uh, what's it called, your Twitter posts and everything on the Atomic Pie. And I've been seeing you go back and forth a lot, you know, with open noms and everything. And um, I, I just, so how, how's that going? Because I, I'm going to be buying the hardware very soon. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I have, I've been busy with other things lately but uh yeah i don't know there were some rumors about that board i'm not so sure what kind of future that board has you know i kind no. of told huh i i was saying no like it's uh, because i've been asking uh like is there an image that we can actually use to lay down on that board and well yeah there's various ones that it, it i mean it depends if you just want to oh you mean you mean a raspy blitz image yeah, yeah well no, we haven't put that up yet. <laughs> We're still testing it. But, okay, so I'm gonna I wait. Had, uh, yeah, th so there was the rumor was about that board was that it was a bunch of them were bought from some project or company that went, you know, bankrupt or something. I don't know, but I don't know if it's true or not because I sent emails to the to the engineering team that you know make it, and they said that. You know, they, they claim that that wasn't true. This was just somebody on the internet who discovered like some auction of a bunch of the boards that were exactly the same. So, you know, who knows? But, you know, uh, the uh, the crypto, what's the, the, the guy who makes the... Uh, Rick. Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that, that makes the, the cases, the 3D printing. I told him... Don't don't invest too much time in in designing anything for it because we don't know yet whether those whether the atomic pie will catch on or be sold. You know, a lot. We have no idea. 
So, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a great board for the price. You know, it's great yeah. to experiment with. How much, how much are they? 99. Uh, no, no, it was 30. It was 35 originally. I think it's up to like 40, 40 now or something. It's just still like ridiculously cheap. Cause I've been, I've been really not adding up those like, oh, the O droids, the O droids, the new O droids, like four gig of RAM. Um, it's looking pretty sweet. $80. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. The thing that I like about the Atomic Pi is because it's Intel based, and you know, there's there's so many different Linux distributions that you can run on it. You know, like mm -hmm. for example, I I, ran, I installed Lubuntu 1904, where HDMI audio is working out of the box, and you know, all that kind of stuff. And we don't really care for just using it just for Raspberry Blitz, whether you know you can run a GUI on it or not. But I think for developer, you know, if you if you want to experiment with developing and stuff, you know, and maybe creating some kind of UI on top or alongside the Raspy Blitz, you know, it's it's useful, I think, for that. That's kind of like what I want to play with it for is is for experimenting with developing other stuff. Cool. So. Very very cool. Um. So. Um. Are there uh, are there any updates that uh, that you want to share about the uh, the Raspy Blitz development or anything or something that you're working on? No, I've been busy with other stuff, which is the reason why I was mostly just just listening in with you guys. Have oh, you built, no worries. Have you built Have you built a Blitz on top of the Odroid? No, no. Okay, I won't, I won't mind having a go because you have um you've got the uh, SSD on it. Well, I, you should be able to because obviously the biggest criticism of the Blitz is the um. The torrent uh, blockchain, isn't it? So um, with the Odroid, you're, it's possible just to you know have it as a, a download, actually download the, the the blockchain as opposed to using a torrent. Um, so that's partly why I wanted to get it. And I was speaking to Coin Cointar um, at uh, the Munich conference. I should get him on here. Actually, he's a good guy, he knows his stuff. Um, and he was saying about using um, I think called Fe 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 Feather Featherbean or Raspbian Feather or something, which is like a a light version of Raspbian, which he could use, and then try and try and run the Blitz on that on on the Odroid or something. So I need to pick his brains on how he would suggest doing that. Mm -hmm. um, um, I also like the idea of like the Blitz on Roids as well. You know, I think it's quite cool. Yeah, cool. Open Open Noms is experimenting with a lot of other boards. Well, I don't know about a lot, but a few other boards and with other you know Raspbian, I think, and uh diet pie some a couple of the other dis distributions there's oh. too much I, I don't have time i don't have time to play with that stuff <laughs> yeah i was speaking to open noms in, in munich it's a shame he's not on actually because he's on last um because of the, for the world crypto users uh, uh world crypto network watch uh, viewers um because uh, i was chatting to him in munich and man that guy knows his nose doesn't he oh yeah, yeah. it's unbelievable yeah, he's a good source, good source of information. Um, so we'll have to we'll have to get him on, and I'll definitely have to pick his brains on on getting the Odroid, getting the Blitz on the Odroid. Um, uh, so yeah, yeah. So um, I just want to uh, I just want to turn it uh, turn it back to Oliver um, because I uh, at the beginning we we started to talk about the uh, the fact that he develops on the macaroons and uh, and TLS and he's got some if um, BTC socialist if I remember this correctly you said he's got some pull requests in. On uh, on LND, so so Oliver, um, how how is are you able to demystify macaroons and TLS for the the average person that is not as technical or somehow break it into layman's terms, like what this means for them? <laughs> I I can try, yes. <laughs> well, Let, let's okay. give it a shot. <laughs> okay, yeah. So you mentioned TLS and macaroons; they're uh, actually pretty separate. They, yeah, usually have to deal with both type of files, but th th yeah, th th they're separate. So let me start with TLS. That's just uh, the SSL encryption, or yeah, the TLS encryption. So it's it's the same that happens in your browser, right? And uh, what LND does, it it just creates its own certificate that isn't signed by any any certificate authority, whatever, it's it's basically not trusted uh, because it, it, it's just created on the fly. So what, why you need to specify the file uh, on the client uh, in LN CLI is it, it only can trust one certificate and you have to feed this certificate into the LN CLI. Or if you use gRPC, you have to give it 
the, the, the certificate and basically tell it, yeah, look, if you receive that one from the server, if it's identical, then you know it's OK. But in the future, and there's already a pull request uh, in from uh, Jost Jager, uh, he's adding Let's Encrypt certificates to LND. So it will, LND will be able to create its own trusted certificate through the Let's Encrypt uh, mechanism. And then you can just connect uh, with a normal trust store if you're operating system. So you you don't need to feed LN CLI or uh, in case of uh, writer lightning, you don't need to feed it a, a certificate anymore. You can just use the trust store of your operating system. So that will be awesome. That's at the moment, that's just a workaround, right? You have to say, yeah, okay, trust this certificate and this certificate only, but that's, yeah, it's just uh, the first step. So we'll, it will get a lot easier after this pull request is, is merged. And then the, the second one, the macaroons, that's how the authentication works. That's once you have uh, the handshake with the server and the connection is set up, you have to um, show that you actually are allowed to use the server. So you present a token and it's, it's similar to a cookie in the web browser, but it's actually a cryptographic setup. So you have... Uh, a payload that is signed and you uh, have a signature and the server can verify that uh, it created this macaroon. So the server has a, a, like a private key, this uh, root key, and uh, then creates an ID, which is just a, a blob of data, a binary blob of data, and creates a signature with this key, with a, a HMAC, so a hashed uh, message authentication code. Um, and the output is a signature, and only the server can verify it uh, because the server is the only one who has the private key. So that's that's a basic setup. But what macaroons uh, allow is that if I get a macaroon and I don't have the private key because I'm just uh, a client, I can still go ahead, take the signature, add a restriction to the macaroon, create a new signature, and then only send this, this new signature to, to the server. Um, or I could even give this new macaroon to someone else who could then even add more restrictions. So if you get a macaroon from the server, you can yourself uh, restrict what is possible to do with this macaroon. So you guess basically, if you get have the admin macaroon from the server, you ha you can do everything. But then you can go ahead and add a restriction and say, okay, now let's make it only valid for 10 seconds. And then you send this new macaroon that you created yourself with the new signature over the network. And if anyone intercepts it, it's, it will only be valid for 10 seconds. And because of the cryptographic setup, no one can take away the restrictions because you need to know the root key that is used to create the macaroon. And, and because it's chained through this HMAC, the, the previous signature is taken as a key for the next one. So you need to know the, the start of the chain. Anyone can add restrictions, but no one but the server can take any away. So I can give you a macaroon and restrict it to your IP address or um, one of the pull requests I created is I could um, create an account that is, yeah, just what it says. Uh, um, I can create an account on my uh, LND node, give it a few Satoshis and then give you a macaroon that is locked to this account. Then you could use this macaroon to come to uh, to connect to my server and spend these macaroons that are uh, these satoshis that are on this account so i could give you access to my node but restrict how much you can spend and i could do this with a macaroon so yes yeah so i could even um give my uh, parents a, a cell phone create a qr code with a macaroon set up an account for them they give me some fiat and then they can use my notes to start using lightning or so, yeah, or uh, allowance for children and I, that's what i was just gonna say i i'm like that is absolutely genius uh, so well, we 
we were we were talking about uh, the use case because I made the NFC car payment thing, and like in Europe here, we we often use the the tap and pay cards. Um, so our bank card, you can tap and pay, and the security trade off is you can only spend you know X amount per day uh, and like three transactions of thirty quid or whatever it is. So if someone gets your card, they can technically spend that amount of money, but that's a security trade off. Whereas, so the way in, in order to be able to do this, I was handing over like you know the keys to the kingdom. Like somebody could just take, go and take all my funds. Whereas if you've got like a custom macaroon, um, then you could have it restricted. So it has that same restriction. Yeah, if you get that macaroon, you can use it, you know, um, every day and you can extract this amount every day. Um, but as soon as you lose your card with that macaroon on, then you just delete that macaroon and then flash the macaroon onto a, onto a new card or, or whatever. Um, uh, uh, and then we did also speak um, uh, in our interview Oliver, with Oliver. He spoke about then adding that caveat to having a little logic chip in the card. So it adds the caveat that you can use this macaroon for a few seconds. So you're then giving the macaroon to the, to the, the merchant. The merchant is then taking the funds from your account on your behalf and putting it to their account, but they've only got a few seconds to be able to take, you know, that amount out. Um, so if someone intercepts it, they can't then use that macaroon again. It's so cool. It's, it's really incredible. Um, and there's there just a whole a whole set of uh, use cases. What about like money? Would that help money streaming, Oliver? Could you use that for, for money streaming? So you'd have like a capped amount or or um, repeat payments or something. Um, yeah, in the in the future, the the pull request that is in at the moment is is very basic. So it's a one time balance, but uh, I plan on on extending that to uh, give it a, a repeat balance. So you could. Give uh, create an account where you say okay, two thousand satoshis per month, and then you can give that to a merchant that can uh, help itself every month to get the, the payment for a service you want to use. And um, so they they themselves have to care about actually getting the money, and you can always delete the account if you don't want to use the service anymore. So you're in full control of your funds because it's the account is on your device, right? And you could also do daily stuff or even say, yeah, okay, every minute you can get a few Satoshis and I'm giving it to a, a video streaming service, whatever. And it cuts off once you um, you disable the account or something like that. Yeah, you, there's, there's so many possibilities. And that's just one new restriction with this account. You can implement whatever restriction you can think of. So uh, it, it, it's just the beginning, right? Yeah, I said, like, in our interview, I said, it's, you know, this is, this is being your own bank, isn't it? When you can issue accounts and um, you can set up direct debits and you can do all the stuff which our legacy banks currently do for us now, like, um, and more, you know. Uh, it's like, but it, it's interesting, right? Because it really is being your own bank. Yeah. You know, it's, it, it, you know, right now we are so out of control of what we have. And this is really giving us like an overdrive of control. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. Yeah, it, it, of course, it it, uh, it is complicated. You have to think about a lot of stuff. You have to take control. Yes. Um, but um, if you want to help onboard your family, your friends, that might be uh, an easier option than they themselves handling private keys for the first time. Uh, eventually, we all hope they will get there. But as just to an incentive to actually start using it and seeing how simple it is, you could be custodian for your uh, social circle. Um, yeah, I mean, I think this is the, it will make a marketplace of custodianship, which I, I actually yeah. think there is something for. Like, there's there's a good case for that, um, which could have like you know front of house and it could have a rating system or whatever, but um, where you dedicate a certain amount of liquidity, which could then be used for other people to use, you know, it could be helped I don't know, loans and uh, all that sort of stuff. Um, uh, no, so I think, I think it is, it, it's one of those like ideas and, and technologies which will develop a new market, you know, a new, new, a new industry. Um, yeah, oh, definitely. Absolutely. Um, so, uh, you know, we're coming up on, uh, you know, we just passed the, uh, the one hour mark on this. Do you guys, uh, do you guys have any, uh, any final thoughts you want to share or anything before we, uh, before we close out today? We're going to uh, go. Not through. really. I mean, just that if you're in San Francisco, you're at the conference, come and see me. Um, we'll fit around. We'll make one of these little devices. Um, 
uh, I think you could buy them like for like fifteen dollars or twenty dollars, and then we, we, you know, we can make some little projects and start getting it to accept lightning. So that's pretty cool. Um, uh, and then just you know, just stay excited about the technology, play with the hardware, buy some boards, try putting you know Node software on there, um, and then contribute. Where, you know, people just contribute where they can. You know, I'm not a developer, but I'm able to like make little bits and bobs, and everyone's able to contribute in some way or another. So I agree. What about uh, what about you, Oliver? You have anything you want to uh, close out with? Um, yeah, if you uh, if anyone has time to play around with my pull requests and test them and give feedback, that would be super helpful because uh, most of them are not merged yet, so they're still uh, the pull requests are still open. So uh, uh, every review uh, really helps a lot, and yeah, we maybe can speed up the process. So that would be awesome. Cool. Thanks. To him. Anything you want to uh, throw in? Uh, final thoughts for uh, from Ride the Lightning World? Yeah, uh, just uh, that you know we are uh, working on the things that I talked about. Uh, you know the pace of development has slowed down a little bit. Uh, you know there are a lot of some other personal distractions also, right? So because of that, you're not able to contribute as much time as we can, but um, as we want to rather. Uh, but uh, just want everybody to know that you know we are here. We are working on it. Uh, you will start seeing a steady stream of releases, uh, you know, uh, sooner or later. So, yeah, just stay tuned. Very cool. Thank you so much. I just wanted to ask Oliver. Sorry, is there like a time frame on when those pull requests on, on when some of that functionality may get worked into macaroons or? Um, that's up to the reviewers, so, so basically Lightning Lab uh, employees. But um, I know one of the pull requests is is uh, needed for the Shango app to work. So uh, the guy who's doing the Shango app is, is putting a little bit of pressure <laughs> onto them. Oh, cool. And apparently he was able to get uh, maybe in 0 0.8 out of them. But I don't know if that applies to all of the macaroon pull requests. But um, yeah, maybe in the next version. Oh, well, uh, the the one after zero yeah. seven, which is about to come out, as I've seen. So maybe yeah, no. in zero point eight. Yeah. What one of the little problems I came across? I want to make like I'm making a vending machine, and I want to have a little physical faucet on the side. So if someone so it says free Bitcoin. You go up to it, has a QR code, you scan it, and it gives you like a hundred satoshis or something. But then in order for it to be able to do on on Lightning. Um, which you can then go around to the, the vending machine and then buy some stickers for 100 satoshis. So I'm getting the money back, but someone's got the experience of actually making a, a lightning Bitcoin transaction. Um, uh, and, and, and having a, 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 the ability to have like, make multiple, like many thousands of these accounts with just like 100 or 200 satoshis on, and then have that just divide, you know, that faucet, just um, uh, uh, give that macaroon. Um, uh, so someone has access to that those funds uh, for a period of time would be so so useful. So I, I can't wait for it to get merged. Um, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try to apply pressure. And if I ever see any of those LND guys, I'll be like, <laughs> do it. <laughs> very very cool guys. So look, I just want to uh, you know before we close out, um, you know we're gonna put that uh, that website you were talking about, Oliver. Um, for that software, we're going to stick that in the show notes. I'm obviously going to put, you know, links to all your Twitter contacts in the show notes. And of course, I want to thank every single one of you guys, you know, this morning, you know, for your time and obviously your contributions to the future, you know, the future of our money. So oh, great, man. Thanks. Thanks for organizing this. I think we should do this like, because it's so, so important to kind of get updates on what's going on in Lightning. And um, oh, yeah. it's been able to bring people in and talk to them. It's just great. So hopefully you can organize this more often. How often are we going to have these then, do you think? Well, you know what? I put out that, uh, you know, that uh, doodle poll and it looks like, so we were kind of split, right? Uh, some people wanted every two months, like uh, Christian, I think, uh, wanted two months. And, uh, you know, everybody that's on this call right now wanted every month. So I'm... I'm happy to do it every month. I, I really enjoy doing it and it keeps us, it kind of keeps us all engaged and it keeps us all talking, you know? So I, I'm going yeah. to put out, uh, I'll put out another schedule uh, at the, uh, you know, in a couple of weeks for, uh, for July and, uh, and we'll see when we can all get together in July to, uh, to see where we're at and then, cool. uh, you know, talk about the updates. Cheers. Thank you. Thank all you. Right. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. It was fun. Bye.